Welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here with co-host Chip. What's going on, Chip? Hey, so tonight we are going to dig in. We're going to dive in. Hester Pierce had some really good statements uh, today, but the key point with all of this is that when you're investing in crypto, you have rights. It's not all about the regulators and those that are here in the XRP space. You've got rights. You've got rights. Rights, <laughs> Jeff. Rights. rights Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyhow, so we're going to talk about that and a lot more. There is a lot to cover. We're going to dig into it in the short time that we have together. Looking forward to it. If you're ready to kick this thing off, let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. Constitutional Welcome. rights, Chip. Constitutional well, rights. Was Rob XRP in here tonight? I don't know if he's in the chat or not, but yeah, he put out a tweet, kind of jumped the gun a little bit because we had Hester Pierce <laughs> in the title, but of course as a topic. So just yeah. letting you guys know, we're trying to get her on the show. Um, we're trying. So, but we do have some guests coming up. By the way, I'd like to take this opportunity to let you guys know on Thursday night, we will have none other than, drum roll please, the bearable bull will be here. Yep, he will be here. Voice only because obviously he wants to protect his uh, identity, which we're cool with. But um, he will be here. We'll be chatting about all kinds of things crypto. So it should be a really fun show. And uh, we'll be super happy to get into it. Super duper. Super, Jeff. <laughs> it really is super. Super duper. <laughs> super duper. And uh, what was I going to say? I had something to, to get into. I, I guess probably there's, there's we've got some cool news to share. I mean, other than that, but... We are very close to relaunching our website, Jeff. Man, I can't wait to relaunch the website. It is going to be epic. epic. It's going to be really good, guys. We're, we, what we did is we, we wanted to make it useful. We wanted to make some um, – I'll, I'll probably preview at least one of the pages, kind of show you what we're thinking, and we'll probably get into it here and there. But just to give you guys a little bit of a – kind of a primer on that. And, again, that's going to be a place that – a destination type of site. We switched to this new platform, which you know Jeff and I are really happy with what we've seen so far, and uh, it's just going to be. It's going to allow us to do some other things that are going to be, um, especially on the flu, okay. f more fluid and everything. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, jump in this first story, uh, another Ripple XRP story, so we can jump right in here. Uh, and this again, you know, it's just like um, Katow is just blowing it up over there with SBI. He's just really going all kinds of. You got something there, Jeff, you want to? Yeah, I've got a really cool video that I thought I would share with everybody. We'll take it on. Let's share it. Let me let me put this into full screen. Here we do go. Do it right? full screen. Yeah. Right, here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. Do it's it. A couple minutes long, uh, but I think it's worth worth the wait. Okay, let's do it. Let's watch. You might have seen this before. Whether you're a financial professional, an overseas worker, an entrepreneur, or a developer, you will find it faster, easier, more transparent, and more affordable to send, receive, and manage digital value. Our world is in the midst of a profound transformation. We want that transformation to work for everyone. Here at Ripple, we're building financial solutions that are faster, more transparent, more sustainable, and more efficient. What took days will now take seconds. What was costly will now be more economical. Call it the internet of value. It's blockchain technology solutions that will help put trillions in trapped capital back to work. It's environmentally responsible crypto innovation for a world that demands sustainability. And it's a whole new way to create, move, exchange, and leverage digital value. We're not just after something more, we're after something greater, which is why we're building it together with researchers and policymakers financial professionals, developers, and entrepreneurs. This is the journey we're on together. 
enabling a world without economic borders, not just for a few, but for everyone. Dude, outstanding. So that's that's such a great video. I want to thank JV uh, for sharing that with us. And what's interesting is that um, this is it was right here. Ripple, it, you know, put this out today. Uh, this evening. Missed it. I, I used to go through their stuff. But Jeff, I um, got trapped for 40 exactly. minutes somewhere before yeah, I usually yeah, I get a chance. That. Man, but check check this out, Trip. Check this out here. Ripple, we're building faster, more transparent, sustainable and efficient financial solutions for everyone blockchain technology solutions that will help put trillions of dollars in trap capital back to work internet of value. You know, it's amazing. Now, I know I've seen this video before. I don't think the video is new. Um, it might be new to a lot of people, um, but Ripple lately has been kind of recycling, you know, some of their old content and it's interesting timing. I, I think you know, here, this is a shout out to what's happening and a shout out on a global scale. And I, I think it's really uh, key at this point. What are your thoughts? I, I don't remember seeing that video. I've seen a lot of their content. I never recall, guys, I want to hear from you guys in the chat. If you guys remember seeing that, I don't remember seeing that one. I remember the one where, you know, the fastest way to deliver money and there's a couple other ones they had, but I don't think I've ever seen that one. So maybe it's brand new. It might be new. I mean, it could be. I just might not have seen it. No, but no. like I said, I have a I have a ripple uh my I have a ripple um list that has every a bunch of different people, key people from Ripple from all over, you know, all key people from Ripple. And it's my ripple list. So I usually hit that every night. Um and I didn't see it today. I was just way too busy, Jeff. Too much going on. You've seen it. Okay, everyone's seen what? it. Never my bad, bullish. Never seen uh one. never seen this one. Nope. Huh. Omar said yes. Yeah, so I, I don't recall seeing it. It might, it might be from a couple of years ago. I mean, one of the things they say in there is no, no. working with the regulators. And we kind of like, is that a new video? Maybe not. It's probably an older video. They have been working with the regulators. If it's a new video and they kept that in, that's interesting. But it sounds like something from an older, potentially an older video. But it doesn't matter. It's great. I mean, the content is great. Working for everybody and then showing a real world. You know, the human part of almost anything that will get you in any commercial, you can always talk about, our company does this and our company does that. But when you show people how it affects families, you got families in three that you got relationships in here and then how you see it work through a couple of different little minor storylines, sends the money, this thing happens, bing, bing, bing. And you see the reunion at the end that gets you, man. It kind of gets you right in the feels. And that's a good, good, um, you know, advertisement. That's right. Let's go, Brandon. Like Let's go, Brandon. Somebody's saying that in the chat. I know that. I know. I know. I know you guys are getting that. And then right on the heels of that, Jeff, I mean, you have um, right here. This is what I was leading to before. This is like Ripple shareholder SBI invest in Russia, largest payment provider called Kiwi. Kiwi. I don't know if that's pronounced Kiwi, but I'll just call it Kiwi for now. I think of Kiwi, I think of New Zealanders, right? I mean, so um, Ripple's remittance partner, SBI Holdings, sealed this agreement with the Russian fintech platform kiwi is reported is confirmed um wait is this a new thing why does this say i, heard a, I think i've heard kiwi before yeah but why this this might have been an older I'm trying to think of what this one is this says on tw today 20 april 1st there was something new that they that they just invested in Either they had the date wrong or something like that we'll have to look for it but i know this story is about a day or two old but they did invest in a payment system over there but you see how they got the date here that's not today, mm -hmm. April 20th, April 1st. Yeah, today's definitely not April 1st. Yeah, that looks like, uh, did you freeze up there, Jeff, for some reason? No. Yes, I you're, did. I'm frozen. Absolutely, Can you hear me? You're absolutely frozen. But there's another one. I'll have to find, I'll have to find where it is. But um, I know that they did. And it's like, man, sometimes you're like looking for stuff. And it says April 1st, too. Is But I got to see SBI. Um, hang on. So, guys, he, so the reason we started a little bit late, Jeff was having some, he was having some technical issues. Which will happen sometimes. Uh, we always never like what to happen. We like to sort of start in time, but it doesn't always happen that way. And uh, I'm looking for this. Where is it for the news? We'll see if we can find it. I don't know, man. I saw the story pop up. It was all over my feeds. And now, cannot find it. Whatever. So it happens. Jeff, come on. Pop right in here, man. Boom. There he is. How we do it? My back? 
Yeah, I'll have to look for it. But um, I know I saw the story had come up a bunch of times on Twitter. Hmm. That happens. What it's are you going to do? Stuff. Good stuff. What are you going to hey, do, Jeff? You know what? Uh, Charlie Gasparino had a uh, really good uh, tweet um, earlier as well. Actually, this was earlier yesterday. Um, didn't get a chance to uh, post it up there yesterday, but wanted to share it here. Um, this is breaking Gary Gensler rolling the SEC uh, Gov staff with long hours, vast agenda, finds himself in an odd place for a progressive <laughs> crosshairs of SEC union that could soon push back. Staffers claim Gensler is using them to burnish his resume and become and become U.S. U.S. <laughs> Treasury Secretary. Well, isn't that Janet um, Yellen's? He wants to uh, replace Janet Yellen. I think he's wants to push her out of the way. So what you're saying, he's gunning for her pretty much, right? Thank he's you, Notorious. Gunning, Appreciate that. For he's gunning for it. It's kind of like, uh, you know, it's amazing what Charlie Gasparino has been able to uncover. He gets some sources. He's talking to people. You know, when he got that out of the SEC where they said, well, Ripple never finished off their network. Now it's coming out of more places, sort of like coming out of the woodwork, right, as they say. And it's somewhat fantastical because Charlie is really interested in this topic, but he also sees it as an attack on all crypto. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on that, Jeff? Do you think, I mean, we talked about this before. We remember we had Alex coining 203 on the show. We talked about what's his ambition. If I got $120 million, guys, I I'm going to be doing something that's a lot more fun than showing up in Zoom calls or at conferences and talking about beating up investors. What's your yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point. You know, I mean, some people, you know, have a higher calling in life, you know, where that you want to accomplish people, investors. Something. Right. You, you want to accomplish something that helps people. And this guy, you know, is really seems to be driven more by um, uh, he's driven by power, you know, a desire for power, a desire for being in a position of leadership. But it's not it, it's not based on an elected position of leadership it is an appointed you know position of leadership meaning that he has to finagle his way to the top um he was appointed to the cftc and i find it interesting so i had posted uh this before but think about how many times he references that he taught at mit when he gets in front of uh, congress to talk about crypto well hey remember i taught at mit uh, so now if he's going to want to uh, push himself into the U.S. Treasury secretary role, he'll say, hey, you remember, I served at the, as the CFTC under Obama and the SEC uh, under the uh, the current administration. And look what I look at the good I did. Look how many great things I did when I was in the SEC. And he's probably going to say it about a million times. And so far, I don't think he's done much good. But, you know, to your point, Chip. Oh, not at all. And I think, uh, and so Charlie Gasparino uncovered some more stuff. And this is what I love about this. I mean, when you have the media, a media outlet like Fox Business covering this, you know, they're blowing CNBC out of the water. That's the other major business network here, just destroying them. And so he uncovered this scoop. Uh, this is a little tweet, uh, tweet storm here. Uh, one of three in March of 2018, Gary Gensler, then of MIT, um, and that's the business college, I think. Let me see. Is that it? Yeah. Business School of Management at MIT, which we, again, Jeff, he tells us about all the time. He met with then um, SEC Chair Jay Clayton to discuss crypto regulation, stating that Bitcoin should not be considered a security, but the SEC should crack down on other aspects of the business. Uh, sources confirmed to Fox Business. So you can I, see. I, I like how he used that word, crack down. Yeah, crackdown. He's like, hey, you should be cool with Bitcoin, but you know, the other these other ones should really be um you should go after them, right? And this is in 2018. This is literally three years ago, three plus years ago, right? We're almost coming up on March of 2022. Would it be four years? And this is back when he was just, you know, somebody at teaching at MIT. And then it goes on the meeting. Uh, occurred at Clayton's office just three months before the former SEC corporate finance chief Bill Hinman gave a speech at the Yahoo Finance Conference providing his view that Ethereum and Bitcoin were not securities, but that others may be. Clayton provided input. Now, this is something new because I didn't know that Clayton had any input. I mean, he might have like got the speech, but this is new information to me, at least. Clayton provided input into the Hinman speech. I've confirmed in 2020, the Clayton SEC 
filed charges against Ripple alleging its use of XRP, here it is, Jeff, to build out its platform and violated the securities laws. Now, what's Jeff, what securities laws would building out its platform violate? Because they, they're kind of going down this tunnel. It doesn't seem like it's going to bear fruit. Like this seems like out of all the arguments you could levy, this doesn't seem like a winner, especially since Ethereum is not built out. Who's who is in crypto now that's built out? The only one you could arguably say is Bitcoin. Ethereum's not. So, I mean, there's a lot of them that aren't. So what's he getting at here? Well, again, I think this goes back to, you know, they're just focusing on the fact that they were monetizing off of XRP. That, you know, the claim is that they're utilizing XRP, at the, distributing it as a means of gaining investment in their Ripple platform, the Ripple Net software solution and building out their business model. And, and I think that's what they're trying to reference. You know, you know, it's it's interesting though, because neither Hinman nor Clayton took any big punitive action <laughs> against uh crypto during their tenure. No. Um, and then they had the time to do it. You know, they could have done it in 18, they could have done it in 19. Um, it wasn't done until 2020. What what was the difference between 2019 and 2020? Because we know that the big increase that everybody started to focus on, media, et cetera, was 2017, 2018, end of 17, beginning of 18. And then we saw it go over the cliff. It was at that moment that you would expect that the SEC would say, hey, wait a minute, there's something going on. We need to investigate. We need to do something. Silence, right? Acquiescence. Silence. And wasn't until 2020, the only difference that I see is that Clayton was leaving office. That's it. And he knew that there was a, you know, a new, uh, you know, ideological difference, you know, coming to the White House, coming to the administration. And there was going to be a new chair who was yet unnamed. However, based on the fact that, uh, that uh, Daddy G was visiting with him in those early years, there was probably a high probability chance that he already knew who was replacing him. Did he like him? Did he not like him? Was Did Clayton have some ulterior motive to say, hey, I didn't do it in my, during my period of time and I'm going to drop the bomb and let you know the next guy take it? You know, or was he singling him out and setting him up for failure? And I don't know. I mean, to me, I still think there's a big question mark. There's a lot of, you know, question marks over those years about what happened. And we read through uh, John Deaton's uh, oh. commentary uh, on the on the on the previous live stream yesterday. And by the way, I'm going to clip that out and put it up on the other channel. So if people just want to see that part, I'm going to take a segment of that and put it up there. But to that there, there's so many unknowns that it just seems like, why did he do it? Why can't we get him out there and just say, hey, Clayton, why did you do what you did? And why is Daddy G now with this real aggressive attitude? Because it's not just crypto that's in the crosshairs. No. Uh, in a little while, Chip, I want to show you a Reddit post all about you know what's going on in Wall Street, like with the Wall Street bets guys. And people are upset you know, in the, in the trading community on Reddit over what Gensler is doing. Of course. It's it's uh, by the way, Jeff. I want to say this is pretty exciting. We got a new fan. This is Abdul. He's saying greeting from Mars. So we got a, we got somebody who's a fan of Mars, which is great, Mars. man. It's like you know, it's fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. And um, <laughs> now uh, he was there, obviously schooling Clayton because uh, he taught at MIT. He schooling, came in ah, and, I like yeah. that. He, I, need, I like oh, you know, I taught at MIT, Clayton. So. MIT. He says like weird. He's like MIT or something like that. He's a weird little draw at the end. MIT. So you remember yesterday, we, 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 we this is interesting here because uh, um, Digital Asset Investor tweeted something out. On one of Deaton's threads, I want to just show you guys real quick and then we'll play the video because this right here is kind of, I mean, it kind of, there's like a deep rabbit hole and it's like, it's all sort of coming out. It was always there. Just like anything that's like someone had covered it and it was like a hidden tape somewhere. It's all public stuff, but when you start putting it all together, it makes a big difference. This was John Deaton's tweet last night. We went over October 28, 2018. Nancy Wotas, who participated in the secret meeting in March, disagrees with him in that Ether is sufficiently decentralized not to be a security. And then Wendy Moore, a Perkins Coy, 
ads, then why isn't Ripple, right? And then there's obviously the XRP ledger is arguably more decentralized than Ether. And here we go, a video that was tweeted out by uh, Digital Asset Investor it says, Cooley's part of a small industry group of Andreessen Horowitz, which we talked about, who's a big token investor in uh, Union Square Ventures, again, a uh, huge token investor. And then Union Square, you know, that's named Union Square because they're out of San Francisco and obviously a Union Square. But Andreessen Horowitz, too, early investor in Ripple, early investor in a lot of crypto. I mean, most of the, if you look at how steep they are in crypto, you can see that there's a lot at stake here. This is the group that got Ethereum the free pass with the SEC. They had meetings. They sort of wrote the fair, uh, or the what was it called, the safe harbor type of proposal. And what I'm going to do is now I'll bring up the video. And again, this is interesting to sort of take a look at because it's sort of all woven together in some nefarious way jeff i'll use that word right there nefarious you know it seems to be a little like it. it seems to be a little bit like not on the up and up but let's listen let's yeah, dial this you know what chip in. you know as you're pulling that up you know i find it really interesting that these guys are very uh uh ethereum or bitcoin centric you know so you're taking this maxi personality so if you think about the bitcoin maxis and the ethereum maxis out there in the community and now you attribute it to, let's say, a Lubin or or some of these others that are being referenced. Maybe that's their path. They're like, it's all about Bitcoin. It's all about Ethereum or it's all about only Bitcoin and Ethereum. Forget about everything else. First mover advantage. We don't believe in any of the other projects. They must be securities. If you have that mindset, Chip, are you going to do, and you're in a position of power, are you going to try to then undermine all other projects after that in order to elevate the stature of the asset and the project that you believe in because your belief is so emotionally driven you know based on maximalism that you don't see any of the other projects as being uh, legit well, i'll say it's driven by i'll say it's driven more by the investment okay you put a lot of investment into it you want to see that investment grow yeah. and obviously if you eliminate competition it's pretty easy i'm not necessarily saying that they're trying to eliminate it all, but it does seem like there's a hatchet job going on out there, right? It seemed like a little bit, a little bit too crazy for them not to be wanting to go after it. I mean, it's yeah. starting to look and smell like that. That's right. I just want to post this one up here from Hans uh, Jerson. Um, it looks uh, relatively new. I haven't seen uh, him comment before here, but uh, the XRP community must be one of the most intelligent, inclusive, and warm-hearted communities in the world. I've never yet seen a real XRP believer and hodler that I don't like. And that's, that's I'll introduce a really you to a few solid statement. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there's a couple out there, but you know, th there's love. I mean, that's a really outstanding statement because, you know, it's a great community. And like, again, Jeff and I have, we're not maximalists. We just like, we really like XRP because we believe so strongly in the use case. But again, hold Bitcoin, hold Ethereum, you know, uh, I was a Bitcoin maxi. I started out as a Bitcoin maxi. I thought that's it. Everything else is garbage because that's how I was introduced to it. I started digging around and started finding stuff. But there's a lot of altcoins that um, I like and I can't own them all. But I at least think, the, you know, they have a really good chance to succeed because they're solving real problems. So this whole idea are, now are all 6,000 of them, 5,000 plus? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, most of them will probably not go away. But the ones that are doing problem solving problems and you look at solana you look at you know matic came out of nowhere and boom they were like sub penny and then bam shot up to two something because they're doing something they have a real use case you know and you look at polygon you look at you know quant you look at these are solving real problems that use case is strong and again a lot of those you know may or may not be in my portfolio but the whole idea is you're right this community is special and the talent I'm always like getting like a music video or something else where somebody tweets it out or there's so much talent in this as well. Lots of talent. And here's another, you know, some interesting uh, feedback because there are a couple of these lobby groups. They just seem to be a little weak. Um, we have uh, uh, Asum6998 says, uh, we need to start a crypto lobbying fund to support candidates for Congress that are pro-crypto. So many crypto millionaires that could fund this. And that's that's a solid point uh, to have some real representation up there that aren't afraid to get their hands a bit dirty, you know, by, uh, you know, actually stating the truth and the and what's obvious and sometimes uh, taking on the difficult 
situations. Uh, but there's a lot of educating that needs to happen out there. So, yeah, and and to, to underestimate what Washington D.C. is, and it's I think you're kind of glamorously call if you call it a swamp, it's really more like a cesspool of filth and just it, everything that's bad about everything. A lot of people, a lot of great people, you know, candidates I've backed in, in the past, and Jeff will know this too. They're all gun ho and I'm going to go there. And then all of a sudden they, they get there and then they get taken out to the back of the woodshed, get a good beating with the two by four and say, here's how it works. You're going to sit down. You're going to shut up. This is what's going to happen. Oh, by the way, do you know what these photos are of right here? Uh-huh. And then they slide them back down and then they let them one side go out and they beat their chest and I'm going to get them and on both sides. That good, no good Republican, that no good Democrat. And meanwhile, they're all owned because somebody has something on them. And then when it comes time to voting, they slide back into their, their evil snake skins and then they do the work, but they get out there and they get on the TV and like the first mic and I'm going to show them. And, you know, it's uh, just like a lot of things like, you know, advice I give my daughters is not about what they say. What guys will say to you, will say all kinds of things to you, but you watch what they do, not what they say, watch what they do because yeah. the actions speak louder than words. That's right. All right, so what video you got queued up? Let's throw this puppy up. Let's watch it through. The Securities and Exchange Commission, and again, I started out my career there. I love the SEC. Uh, I'm incredibly critical of the SEC because in 2017, until December, they were pretty much silent on tokens. And there were over, I don't know, 1,500 token issuances uh, in 2017 that uh, suddenly now the SEC has said uh, tokens are securities with the exception of Bitcoin and now Ether, even though at the, if Ether were to do their launch today, they would be in violation of the law the way they had done it. Uh, they, you know, and the SEC continues to uh, really be silent other than through enforcement actions. There are a number of uh, investigations pending right now against companies who floated tokens uh, in 2017, a few in 2018. Uh, they are speaking by enforcement and by speech, and that is not a way to regulate a market. And uh, Cooley's part of a small industry group with Andreessen Horowitz, who's a big token investor. Uh, Union Square Ventures, again, a huge token investor. Uh, NVCA, two academics, Joe Grunfest and uh, Adam Sterling from Berkeley. And then two other law firms, McDermott, Will & Emery, and Perkins Coie. And we submitted a safe harbor proposal to try to rationalize the securities laws with token offerings so that entrepreneurs who are interested in doing token offerings have some basis to actually do that. Uh, it's been sitting with the SEC since March of this year. We continue to meet with them, with the regu other regulators. That's one regulator. They're yeah, so Jeff, your immediate thoughts on that? Man, it's interesting. I was trying to go and just look through our notes as to you know what this was really all about. Um, but it's 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 interesting, you know, based on you know we we look back and get this idea of. You know, what she said that really stands out is that if Ethereum would launch the way they did, they launched today, they wouldn't be allowed to do what they did. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so now, you know, it's amazing, you know, what they're, you know, what they're given. Uh, they're given a, a, you know, kind of a free pass at this point. Um, what was good for them then should be good for other projects today, potentially. But that's also in, in the deficiency of true regulatory clarity that could be, uh, you know, we could have a good move in that direction had they passed the Token Taxonomy Act, which Maxine Waters uh, hasn't done. But anyhow, what, what is your feedback on that? Yeah, well, I think what's interesting. So this happened in September 8th of 2018. She's referencing just a year before. So she's saying, look, since 2017, getting frustrated about it, saying, from 2017, you had a couple things. She's talking about, she's really putting like a bright light on the fact that there's so much inconsistency with the SEC. And the fact is, is that 
you know, him had already had his speech earlier in 2018. I think that happened in April, May, or June, or something like that. And we're already at September. And what she's referencing is, yeah, initial coin offering go after them, but they were quiet on so many other things. And here this working group got together and they were at least trying to put together, which we believe a lot of it came to be the safe. We don't know how much of that safe harbor is left, but the idea, the whole point of it is they were trying to craft something that would give just a little bit, some walls, some things you could bounce off of, some sort of a, a semblance of guidance versus what we have now, which is nothing, no clarity, no nothing. And I think, you know, Nancy Wotas here, who's who's doing the speaking, you know, does the best she can. And she says, she calls out the SEC. It's one of the things she says. She's like, yeah, I'm going to call them out because she doesn't believe they're doing a great job. This is her right here. She's a, she's a partner over at Cooley, but she's a, she serves as a counsel in connection with corporate governance matters, acquisitions, dispositions, mergers, private and uh, public offerings, joint ventures. So she's somebody who you know, really is, I wouldn't mind seeing her full bio there, but she's somebody who really knows um, the landscape. She's not somebody who's kind of like, you know, watching it from a, from the uh, from the side or anything like that. And you have to do this. Here we go. Because, I mean, you look at some of this stuff and then you got right there, blockchain token and technology and tokenization. So she began her career with the SEC in the Division of Market Regulation and later served as counsel to chairman of the commission. So Coming out of, you know, the market regulation and having spent time doing that, she, again, she's very frustrated in this video that the SEC sitting on it, not doing anything, the inconsistencies of what's happening. She was lawyer of the year in corporate governance in Palo Alto, which is, by the way, Jeff, I don't know if you know who else is in Palo Alto. That's Apple. Um, best lawyers in America in 2013. Recognized leading lawyer of the best lawyers in America and the government, corporate governance. So again, she's got a really strong resume. She's a member of the opinions committee in the business section of the California Lawyers Association. Um, she was the co-chair of the corporation committee on the business section. But the one that I see that really stands out to me was she's formerly with the SEC with the Division of Market Regulation. So she understands regulators. She understands, because she also mentions, hey, the SEC is not the only regulator. There are other regulators here. So I thought she'd said, it's amazing what we've seen from her, you know, come to light um, as of late. But I don't know. You know, I'm kind of wondering, Jeff, are some of these videos and some of this stuff where you got people talking about, well, we met with the SEC and then this happened and that happened. Will he be called as expert witnesses? And that's if it goes to trial. And can the SEC afford for stuff that, you know, didn't covered by not only John Deaton, you know, stuff that Jeremy Hogan's talked about, also stuff that, you know, digital asset investors been uncovering, you know, digital perspectives, Brad Kimes, finding all these little videos. And then a bunch of people who end up finding the videos and give them to them to kind of showcase. So I'm kind of wondering, it's like, you remember how Grimm it started like in December and you and I said, hey, it's a really thin case that doesn't have any legs. It's 70 pages of garbage. We broke it down. And then we went from streaming once a week to basically streaming, I don't know, I'd say six or seven days. We went heavy into it. And that's kind of what really launched on the chain, right? Yeah, it's really, it's really amazing. I, Chip, I mean, you bring up a lot of great points. And, you know, we look at, you know, previous videos, there's a lot to, of truth to, to dig up. And, you know, fortunately, there's a lot of good researchers out there that are willing to dig up the truth. Uh, that's hidden out there in video content like we just watched, um, in written content. Um, sometimes you can even dig up some truth from old uh, MIT courses. Who, who would who would have thought? You know, there's someone that would have taught at the at MIT. Um, but anyhow, uh, so you know, one of the things that I think is so relevant, and you know, some of the things that we're hearing from there, we're hearing just in general. There's like this theme that's being developed here, and I, I believe that sometimes people forget that as investors, you know, as citizens of this country, as citizens of other countries, investing in a space, uh, sometimes you actually have rights uh, you know, that need to be protected. Sometimes the regulators are overreaching or, you know, overzealous uh, to accomplish something that's in their own interest only and maybe only based on uh, their own opinion. And that's it, you know, based on nothing else. Um, but I, I find it interesting because 
Um, here's an article that came out by Hester Peirce uh, actually uh, yesterday morning. Uh, and this is something that I think it's it's really important to reference, really c uh, critical to reference it, especially on the heels of the video that we just played. But here, uh, one of the things that she's saying is that investors have the right to make their own decisions without regulators standing in the way. Mm. And really, if we think about you know what you know, what are some of the ways that the regulators are standing in their way? You know, I Chip. Gary Gensler, he's he's not even like a, a road bump in in the road. He's almost like those those spikes when you go back to the rental car and you know you drive over the spikes and they say don't back up. That that's Gensler. He's like he's like the spikes in the middle of the road that come up. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dispute that. You're spot on about that. Yeah. So here's something that she said, and, and this this should resonate because this is what you know. They're supposed to be doing. This is the passion that we're referencing earlier. What does someone do when they have $120 million? They go out there and they go to help people, right? Look at what she says. An important part of my job is protecting investors from fraudsters who can do them much harm. Right. She should also say protecting investors from overreaching, overzealous regulators, politicians, right? Well, she has, Jeff. I mean, at the blockchain association or the blockchain meetup, whatever it's called, the blockchain, uh, Texas blockchain uh, conference they had, that was exactly what she said. Hey, what are what are we doing here? You know, are we are we protecting investors, or are we uh, what are we doing? I mean, it's like she's absolutely right about that. And I just love how outspoken she's become. She was a little bit, you know, when Gensler. I mean, before Gensler came to town, yeah, there was a lot of optimism by a lot of people in the space. But when Jay Clayton was there, I mean, one of the things Nancy Wotas South talks about was there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of anything going on. They weren't going after tokens. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, yeah, they went after the obvious uh, initial coin offerings, right? That was pretty easy, open and closed, cut and dry. But they weren't really giving guidance or they weren't really meeting with this group that they kind of said, hey, put something together and we'll ignore you. Kind of like how Gensler's ignored Hester Purse's whole sort of you know this this, this both 1.0 and 2.0 of safe harbor that's it and 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 i think we're starting to see a little bit of that here as well because you know one of the things that you look at like a gary gensler and he's on his high horse and he doesn't believe chip that you're smart enough to make your own investment decisions gary gensler actually believes that since he taught at mit chip he knows more about your own individual personal investments than you do. I mean, how does that make you feel if, you know, you got this guy out there, you know, that's saying, Chip, you probably aren't smart enough to decide how you invest your hard-earned dollars. And by the way, I need to, I need to protect you from yourself because you might, you might make bad decisions and put all your money into a speculative asset. You might lose all your money. So, Chip, it's my job as the chair of the SEC to make sure that you don't invest your money in anything that might be considered risky. Yeah. And you know what that's called, Jeff? Let me throw it up on the screen really quick here. It's called the nanny state. Uh, started as a Brit British origin, conveys a view that the government or its policies are overprotective, interfering unduly with personal choice. The term likens a government to the role that a nanny has in child rearing. But the difference there is the child is young and cannot make decisions on his own. And what you mentioned there, Jeff, is that yes, indeed, as adults, we can basically make our own decisions. And what, what what's going on, and this is kind of where I think a lot of governments are headed. You are going to do X, you are going to do Y, and here's why you're going to do it, because we've got your best interest at heart. Wink, wink, you know, it's like, well, you know what? I'll tell you what, when it comes to investment, you know, people go to Vegas every single day, Jeff. You know, what go, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? But people go to Vegas, they bet the farm, they 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 go all in with the chips, or like I'm all in. And guess what happens? They lose everything. Who is protecting them? Who is gonna protect them from themselves? And well, so what if they had about you know 14 or 15 scotches and they couldn't think for themselves? Sorry, they lost it all. There you go. 
that's in Doug saying we live in a post-fascist totalitarian state and you see the mindset. It's amazing to me. I think sometimes people need to visualize it. You have to see it to believe it. And now you see it and hopefully you believe it. Um, XRP speedboat. It was a boring day today. Even the markets were boring. After the show, I was thinking of setting the boat on fire just to liven up the day. Well, that's what <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good idea in, in, in theory, but not in actuality. But um, who was that bit bit lord that did that one time? He says that uh, that's it. I lost a couple hundred grand. He lit fire to his apartment. Hey, man, you know, it's like Mark. chill out. He put out another <laughs> yeah. series too that's actually pretty funny. You get a little out of hand. So, so I like what Esther Pierce was saying here, Chip. Investment decisions are inherently personal. personal. An investor's age, career opportunities, asset mix, family situation, cash flow, expenses, and uh, anticipated length of retirement, interest, personal conviction, risk tolerance, all play into whether a particular investment makes sense for a particular person at a particular time. Hopefully, Daddy G is listening because Daddy G doesn't know what's best for everyone else. He's made some good decisions. He found a way to finagle and earn $120 million. And so he's got a significant net worth. And I'm sure in the early days, he took big risks to get to where he got. Um, but now he wants to tell everyone else, hey, now that he's made it, what maybe some of the paths that he took and really some of the most successful people today failed in order to succeed. And what we're seeing a lot of today is they're trying to remove that failure component, which means that if you take that out, you'll never have successful people ever again, because there has to be some, uh, there has to be some level of potential failure to push you to the next level. Uh, Chip, it's like kind of getting rid of the grade F in school. Sometimes you have to fail in school to wake up and say, I don't want to ever fail again. But could you imagine in school, they're like, no, we're never going to, you're never going to get an F. You're never going to be embarrassed. You're always just going to be, you're just going to exist. Everybody's going to sit around in, in big circles and sing Kumbaya uh, because they're just going to be happy and everything's going to be great. It's just, it's a utopian society that doesn't exist because that's not the utopia I want to live in. I like yeah. the utopia where you have a chance of failure, you yeah, know, losing. success and failure. Yeah, losing like some of the best things, and I think everybody here too. If you look back in your life and you look at one of the times where it really screwed up, something bad happened, but you rose to the occasion and another door opened and something something kind of cool happened. And that's kind of it. You'll never forget that. No matter how long you go on in life, you just won't. But sometimes you have to experience failure. And it's like, and if you don't have that failure or, or go down that deep, you know, dark well or whatever it is, right? If you hit the ground and you go like i'm at ground zero but then oh wait wait there's more bad things gonna happen that's when the when, when things start picking up again that's what you have this deep appreciation for and you fondly look back on those days as being really tough and everything but you appreciate every minute of every second of the day and one of the things that you know having this fascist uh sort of state where everyone's going to choose what you're going to do and it's like it starts it works great when you have a bunch of slaves like that's what they want people to be slaves you do this you move that you'll be told everything to do but where's your freedom where's your freedom of choice where's your freedom as a human being um you don't have to ask for it you know it's one of the greatest things in the bill of rights in the u.s it's yeah. like you're born free man you don't you there, you answer to nobody you might answer to God, you but you you do not answer to another human being. And up until that point in the 1700s, you know, late 1700s, it had always been filled with dictators. And Joe Rogan, we played that speech, always dictators, right? Or fiefdoms where the king and the queen, that's what we're getting like. The king and the queen will tell best what's right for their kingdom. When you can eat every, well, it's a food shortage this year. We'll have all our food. But you, kind sir and kind madam, you will be eating on Tuesdays and Thursdays and maybe one of the weekend dates. But don't worry. We're going to be healthy to, to rule over you, right? So this is kind of the thing we get to. And I wanted to put this up here because I thought this was a great comment by Jim D. He said, Hester Purse has amazing courage, fearless. I hope she can avoid career attack by her superiors. And... I you think won't be able that, to avoid it. But. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can avoid it, but I don't think she cares at this point. I think she's no. really, you know, I mean, I think she doesn't really care. I mean, do you think so, Jeff? Do you think she does care? No, I think she cares. I think everybody has a, a level of caring, you know, but at the end of the day, I think she's willing to fail 
to succeed. She's willing Correct. to continue to do what's right. So right. she might be afraid of what could potentially happen, but at this point, she's willing to sacrifice everything to do what's right. And I'm hearing that a lot lately. We're seeing that across the board. We're seeing you know, people saying, look, I'm going to risk it all because this is the time to do it. You have to do it because otherwise you're not going to have anything to risk. So it's now or never. Uh, and yeah, so I agree with that. Yeah, risk reward. So yeah. EC2189 Keku, thank you for the support. He says, they're not gods, but they like to think themselves to be. Yet when it comes down to it, look who has the actual power, stake and responsibility, yeah. us. And that's why I always say we the people, because, you know, it's one of the most important documents it starts out. We the people, we the people. When I use that, I talk about us in crypto. I talk about us as humans on the planet occupying the third stone from the sun called Earth. That's what we are. We are we the people. And you know what they don't want you to know? They don't want you to know you're the majority and they don't want you to know that they're an extreme minority. And we're starting to see some of those walls kind of come down and collapse. We're seeing them in various countries. I look at Rome, what they were doing. I look at some other, you know, I look at down under what they're doing over there. People aren't sitting down. They're not going to take it. Why should they? they live, they're living great lives. And to be to have that ripped out of their hands? No, Jeff. They're not going to sit quietly in a corner and say, sure, what else could possibly do? That's a really nice comment, um, EC. Appreciate I, that. I, yeah, I really like that comment. And Chip, I think if you look out your window, you might see... Uh, Gary and, and his gang leading people over the cliff. Here, let me let me just show you what's going on outside the window here. That's awesome. So so check this out. So while we were talking, I highlighted a couple other uh, sentences nice. here uh, from from Hester. One of them, consequently, investment decisions are best made by an investor or an advisor with a deep understanding of the investor's circumstances and financial needs, not by a regulator seeking to act in what it perceives to be the typical investor's best interest. Kind of what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And this is Gary, and this was uh, Senator uh, Kennedy saying, um, Gary, do you believe that you're their daddy? <laughs> talking about you know, these uh, financial institutions and corporations on how he's behaving. And, and he started getting really nervous. But here she went on, because a regulator cannot know each individual's complex mix of circumstances, she cannot decide which investments are good for which investor or when, for which investors when. Right. A regulator who attempts to do so is essentially saying that she can look from afar at an investor's life and decide what securities are best for that investor you know and then it, it this this definitely goes on you know more and more in depth because look at this because of the inherent limitations on what it can know about particular investors the sec would do well to resist the urge to engage in financial planning by regulation now what does that tell us about her thought process of how Daddy G is 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 presenting himself, Chip. Well, I got to say how bold this op-ed is. It's extremely well written. I think I've written it. I've read it twice already. It is so well thought out and put together. And it's really if you're trying to illustrate a point, I love what she's talking about here, Jeff, because she's saying that we don't need regulators, you know, ticking every box for you. It's like what a Oh, I'm sorry, Miss. Uh, you know, Chip. What else do you need? Oh, do you, oh be careful when you drive, or you're gonna do. I mean, this is the overreach is incredible, and it's what she's eloquently po eloquently pointing out, without saying it's overreach. But it's so right. obvious from the point she's making. A really well done op-ed by Hester Pierce. That's it. And you know, here, you know, I thought this one was interesting. But government should be wary of overriding the choices of individual liberty. Uh, regulars have a role to play, but that role should always be carried out with humility and a realization that investors have a right to make their own decisions, regardless of what regulators think of them. I like this idea that she threw in humility and she's really putting and putting this article together. You can tell with a person in mind, because when you come out and every word out, every other word out of your mouth is I taught a course at MIT you're no longer approaching things with humility. You're now trying to elevate yourself to a different stature to 
to, uh, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, coerce a certain opinion out of people based on where you may or may not have attended or where you may or may not have worked, et cetera. So, you know, I think it's a little presumptuous. It is. You know, so I was just thinking of something, something came to mind. I, I thought a disaster girl while we were saying that, because this is kind of like if Hester Purse was like a young, you know, kid, this is what she kind of just did right there. If you look at the SEC behind her right there, she just, she just lit it up, right? She's like, got the look in her face. She's like, I dropped an op-ed. And it, what you see in the background is a girl kind of like giving a grin in the background. You see just it blaze. And it just happened to be a dad catching his kid. The kid turned around. And then this sold as an NFT for a lot of cash. But it was called Disaster Girl. And I don't know, right. it's like 10, 12, 15 years ago we covered it. But I just thought about this. I'm like, I can almost see her setting blaze the SEC. Doesn't really... It's not that she doesn't care because she does. It's evident in her writings, but she doesn't really care about the blowback. She's going to speak up. She's going to exercise her free speech. She's going to speak about topics that she feels in her gut are the correct topics. And she's not going to be swayed one way or the other because she's standing up. And what she, you know, what she's standing up for Jeff. She's standing up for all of us. So, you know, hats off to Hester Purse. She, she's going to probably take a lot of heat internally. Probably has to turn her phone off. She's probably getting all kinds of emails blowing up uh, in her inbox. But you know what? What's Royceman coming out and saying? Nothing. Listen, there's five of them over there. And who do you hear from? Crypto Mom. They don't even like, I bet you Gary Gensler, Daddy G, does not like the fact that he she has a title. Because what we're calling Daddy G, I mean, calling him Daddy G, that's not favorable, Jeff. It's not, it's no, not, it's it's not, not. a good title he enjoys, right? And a lot of yeah. other choice uh, words, I must say, that aren't favorable as well. That's it. Yeah. That's a, that's so. a good one. Here's, um, so EC is uh, continuing the uh, Python references. XR, <laughs> XRP is the little cute killer white rabbit. <laughs> Ready waste regulators and Gary. Best part, there's no holy, <laughs> holy hand grenade. Yeah. Bring out the holy hand grenade. Hand grenade <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, Jeff. By the way, I found my DVD collection. Um, in the garage of all the python stuff and I'm like i don't have a dvd player anymore what am i gonna do i'm like you know i can they could probably just watch it on once everything went digital i got rid of all my cds and dvds and all that stuff and but i still have some records jeff i still have some yeah only because my kid got into it and she was like i was trying to explain to her this is the funny thing about technology she's like i said why would you want a regular camera uh oh it looks like i froze now jeff what's going on tonight I don't know. Yes. Rob XRP is saying missed my tip message. Man, Rob message. XRP, I was just super happy you were excited about the show, but you were like Hester Pierce is on the chain. I'm like, whoa, man, not yet. We're we're, we're trying to get her on the chain, but right now, no. Doug but is thanks. saying review Tony's video with Hester Pierce. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it a couple times. Yeah, yeah. We got to get Tony back on the show. It's been a while since he's been on. Andrew saying, hey, Chip was making fun of Crypto Mom like a month ago, saying she wasn't any better than the rest. Well, no, but, at but, that but, point, she was really silent. And we did hang say. Hang on a second. Wait a minute. We, if someone, we if someone lobs, a, if someone lobs an exa ac her, accusation, let's talk about it. I talked about it. I was open on the show. I said, you know, anytime you hold opinions, you can hold them tight to the vest. You can hold them loosely. You know, you can either hold on loosely or you can. And I said. After reviewing her safe harbor and looking at deeper into some of her writings, I was a little bit frustrated with some of the things. There were some things going on, as she was saying, early days, right? This I'm talking about going back to early January and other times. And what I stated was when I went down that rabbit hole, I came back out and said, hey, I reread the safe harbor one. I reread some of the things she changed in safe harbor two. And I went into her blogs. I started reading a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute. She's earned it back. And we've said it here. She's earned yeah, us we even said it when, when there was a turning point, Chip. We even said she earned it back because we were calling her the enforcer, enforcer mom. And right. then we, we said she's earned it back. Now she's crypto mom again. There was a period of time we'd have to go back and reference the time frame, but 100%. Gary the Lizard Man. It's XRP Supercar, Gary the Lizard Man. Yeah, and Jungle's done a great job of doing that to Clayton. The Lizard Man. But yeah, I mean, that's fine. Hey, yeah, so I'm still doing the max headroom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here, here's another up. one. <laughs> Chip, here's something I thought was interesting. So we, we've talked a bit about what's going on in El Salvador. And we talked about, you know, some of the other countries that are adopting Bitcoin. 
Um, some people are against that idea. We see there's been some resistance over in El Salvador, but Vitalik comes out, right? And, and he says, shame on Bitcoin maximalists who support El Salvador's president in forcing businesses to accept the cryptocurrency. Now, that's the title of it. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, this this is some of the things that uh, making businesses accept a specific coin goes against the ideals of freedom important to crypto, he said. Pushing Bitcoin to millions of people without educating them is reckless and could lead to scams, the crypto billionaire said. And uh, so I don't know. You know, I, I hear some of the things that he's saying, but I would have to agree to disagree with his thought process on, on how he came to this conclusion. Um, I think the adoption of an asset is a positive thing. If it starts but with Bitcoin, it to. starts with Bitcoin. What's but that? For, he, I think maybe he's taking umbrage to the point of forcing businesses to do it. Right. You know, like say, hey, we'd like you to support that you this. Have to. Yeah. That that's and, and, and I'm OK with that because more about right. decentralization and freedom. It's like, hey, if you want to support it, that's awesome. But if you don't, Jeff, I thought we'd take a little time right here. Kind of wanted to show um, our website right here. Hopefully this will work. But I want to show one part of our website. And this is what we're going to have feature, which are, um, the, you know, every time we do a show, what Jeff and I do is we put together. We have a lot of different topics and things that we talk about. But this is an idea. This is a page, one of our new pages. Um, this yeah. was a show we did not too long ago, but one of the yeah. things you'll be able to do here is you'll be able to listen to the show like in a, in a podcast manner. You can, you know, jump out to other ones too. You can listen to it here. You can watch the show. And then here's the links to all the articles that we discuss. You know, they show up in a nice format here. And again, so you can read that. about it. You can watch the video. So everything we talk about in a show, you can go back, hey, I missed that, or I'd like to see that video again, or you know, these guys talked about an article. I don't remember what it was. You're not going to go back. Well, watch the video. What you can do is come right here. Everything will be in one place. And um, yeah, so you can see there's a lot of stuff. Very in a graphical format. You know, you'll see the 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 source down here. Headline, a little bit of a, a, a byline there. And is that decentralized Dan up at the top. Uh, no, it's no, uh, it's uh, Chalmath Pelvitalia. Yeah. Oh. Um. Who I happen to like a lot. Um, and then stuff too. Sometimes we'll put throw we throw our notes in there and what we're thinking. A lot of times Jeff and I'll throw notes in there. Um, but you can kind of see a lot of times we we don't get to everything, but we do our best. And you'll see kind of what's in our head and what we're thinking. But you see the way the tweets show up, the way the articles show up. It's pretty slick. Let's suppose you awesome. go like, hey, hey, I want to share that, that out pretty soon, right? Yeah, exactly. You go, hey, I want to share this on Twitter. You bounce over there, and there's a story pops open on Twitter. Potentially, let's see if it pops up. Yeah. yeah, so there you go. So it'll put together a Twitter card like this. You can share it on social. So we say, hey, share it. It's a good way to kind of, um, you know, help out. But that's one of the things. We'll be, we'll be talking more about the website too as we go on. But I thought I'd just show that sort of preview. Kind of, uh, you guys can leave comments down below what you think of it. But again, we want to have a resource because we put a lot of time and effort into these links. A lot of times you're talking to someone, you're like, yeah, I'm not chained the other night. They talked about this. Art. There, you, there you go. There you go. Who did that? That quick. That's fantastic. Oscar. <laughs> Oscar, he's awesome, man. You know what? Let's yeah. keep that in our repertoire. That is just fantastic, man. <laughs> I knew it had to be Oscar. That's freaking yeah. awesome. He's yeah, something, like oh, something real quick that looks pro, like you spend hours on it, man. It's fantastic. So, um, yeah, thanks for that, man. That's good stuff. Put that up there again, Jeff. Let's throw that up there. Uh, hang on, hang on. I Let's look at the look on her face, too. It almost is like that little kid growing up. Oh, wait, <laughs> just, there we go. She's turned the right way in everything. Oscar hero, man. <laughs> Absolute hero status. That's fantastic. We have to download that. We got to, uh, every time she comes out with something, we got to we gotta blaze yeah. it, man. We got to get that. Holy it's, cow, uh, that's fantastic. Our buddy Oscar over in Iceland. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Love it. Yep. Love it. And look at the time, Jeff. Uh, you know, it's time to uh, it's time to talk about what we're going to be doing this week. So tomorrow night is it will, Jeff mm. and I'll be back here Thursday night. We will That's have none guess. other than the bearable bull who has aggressively above average content when he comes on the chain. He might think he has aggressively right. average content for all his stuff, even though we all know better. Above. It's going to be above average on the chain. We'll have him here. 
and he is an open book. He's going to talk whatever. I think we're going to have a little loads of fun. We'll take some questions from you guys, and uh, let's have some fun on Thursday. Tomorrow night, Jeff and I will be back here. And then, of course, you know, we broadcast six days a week, Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then, Jeff, what's the other What's the other day when you do a solo? What are we talking about when we stream? We stream, stream. six you days a week, Sunday no, through Thursday, that. 8 no, 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 Saturday morning. Stop, <laughs> tonight, Jeff. Stop, stop, Jeff. No, no. Saturday, Jeff does Saturday rant. Saturday morning at 8 a.m. 8 yeah. a.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern yeah. Time. That was my crazy. dad had to remind him of my dad. I was talking to him the other day and he said, there's only a problem. He goes, you realize it's not standard time right now. It's still daylight savings time. So it's actually EDT instead of, I said, nobody cares. Nobody's Hester, no one's going to pay attention. Look what Crypto G says. Hester's buying more matches. <laughs> <laughs> Light it up, man. Light it up. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ani. I really appreciate it. Thank everybody for coming in here tonight. And uh, it's always great to see new faces, you know, and you guys know that if you're coming in here, uh, I do have T-ball practice. Crypto Saturday. G is like getting it out there. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm sitting out in the lanai in my backyard poolside uh, with my dog, my best buddy right next to me. Uh, I'm nice. tweeted some pictures out of him, but he is he's next to me right now. I get up, he gets up. So XRP, XRP Carolina. Carolina. OG. Yeah, David, David Maturo. Another OG. Yeah. Now David is from. Let me see if I remember. Um, I don't remember. He lives in a van down by the river, Jeff. Oh, he's That's in it. Africa, if is I remember he? correctly. I thought he lived in a van down so. by the river. Maybe, maybe he does. Wrong. Maybe I'm. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's somebody different. All right. Or maybe he can throw it up there. I don't remember exactly. I believe he. That's where he was. Um. Okay. Anyhow. Yes, all right. Let's see. Maybe I'll even post it. But we've got. Uh, man, we got. That's it. I can't believe what time it is, Chip. It goes by fast, Jeff, when you're having a load of fun and you're dispelling information and hanging out with the best people in crypto. That's all the on-the-chain family members. Love you guys. Really do. You guys are fantastic. You shoot us good stories. And you. you. Oscar puts together that thing on the spot. We're on the show. I mean, it's just a phenomenal, man. It really is. It just makes me all giddy inside, Jeff. I love it. So yeah. that's all we have. We're going to get out of here. Jeff, any final words? David is from Kenya. Yeah, pretty good, Jeff. Pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Pretty impressive, Jeff. Kenya. There you go. Sweet. sweet. So yeah, anyhow, not, that's so, it, I, haven't, sure. I haven't been to that continent yet. I got to get over there, Jeff. You know, over I, have, uh, I haven't either. And it would be it'd be a great place to go. It would be awesome. I'm, I, I would love to just, just spend like two months just, go, yep. you know, just on like a tour. It's such a huge continent, too. And so many great things to do and see. Uh, so first step, we'll have to go to Kenya. First step. Well, we know we're crashing. David's house. That's right. We'll be over there, man. We'll be crashing. Fine. So, All right, guys. Awesome. We'll see Until you on night. the next one. Two days away from Bearable Bowl. Let's do this. See you That's later. Tomorrow. 8-8. Hey, Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.